excited about our next guest. Yes, uh, yes, yes. We've, we've talked on numerous occasions, and uh, he's a, a newly uh, married man of God. He's been booed up. Yeah, and, <laughs> um, but he's done so much uh, in, in the realm of his profession as a psychiatrist, psychologist, excuse me. Uh, you've probably seen him uh, as an expert on ABC Nightline. Mm -hmm. He's been on CNN as an uh, uh, expert, as they call him, in on time to time. And right now he's currently serves as a consultant for the NBA on player development, relationship, and family issues. Please welcome yeah. to the show my yeah. friend, Dr. Alduan Tart. Hey, Dr. Tart, welcome. thank you so much, man. Welcome. How y'all doing? Oh, nice. How you doing? Good, I'm glad good. to see y'all still not behaving, but that's okay. <laughs> that's why I had to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um, I'm just amazed um, with, uh, I've always told you when we've talked, um, respect the calling on your life, mm -hmm. what God has given you. And, and you're one of the guys I've seen to really go in that lane. God has called you to do something. You've, you've done that and, and you've studied and you've asked him for direction. Talk to us a little bit uh, briefly about what God is doing with you this season because you have something new going on. It's phenomenal. But first... We have to give a shout out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, see, that's a little warning. Y'all helping me out. I want to say a shout out to, to my wife, yes. Becca. Yes. Right. Amen. And also to my daughter, Raquel, who is watching Amen. as well. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. So, you're right. Thank you for see, you're keeping welcome. me out of yeah. the doghouse before I really even have time to get in it. So, I appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm Thank you. Congratulations. The, I am enjoying the married life. Yes, I yes, am. That's great, great. That's great. All the grapes, the back rubs, the foot. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. great. Oh, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Three meals a day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's yeah. hooking you up. Okay, you know that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, that's good though. That's good. Yeah, I like the good. back rub part. Right. And the feet, you know. Yeah, you, you, it, it gets so it gets support. Hard, you know, you should take care of your take man. That's right, that's Regina. right. Yeah. That's, that's right, right Doctor Tart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to us about where God is taking you now. Yeah. We following His leading. Yeah, God has put it. I mean, it's it's been scary. Yeah. I mean, He's talked to me about merging mental health and and ministry. Wow. wow. I've had the opportunity to give the word at a couple of churches and. I enjoyed it, you know? <laughs> when pastors called me and said they want me to come in, I said, you know, I'm a psychologist. And they were like, we prayed about it, we want you to come in. And so I've prayed about the word and I've talked about pain and parenting and relationships mm -hmm. and, and helping people to move on their visions. And I've really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this next season is me purposely contacting churches and, and, and receiving that to purposely build mental health and life coaching in the churches. Mm -hmm. I and mean, think about it. We go on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. And we hear the word and we start writing down our visions and our goals and know we need to transform. But what happens? by like Tuesday, mm -hmm. right? you know, right. <laughs> exactly. with the implementation. Mm -hmm. We know what to do, mm -hmm. uh, but like the intercessor was saying before, how do you pray? How mm -hmm. do you move forward? How do you actually do it? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I realized that's where mental health professionals can come in mm -hmm. and Christian counselors can come in and say, all right, here's the A to Z to help you to get from where you are mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. to where God has called you to be because mm -hmm. that, that walk can be lonely without, mm -hmm. without a prayer partner, mm -hmm. someone mm -hmm. guiding you. So. Yeah. And, 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 People may say, really, merge mental health and ministry? Yeah, a lot of wounded people sit in the church, secretly wounded, and have things going on mentally, but are afraid to share it because it's like it's embarrassing. I'm in church, so I shouldn't have anything going on here. Talk to a single pastor that does not tell you they don't get calls mm -hmm. every single day mm -hmm. about mental health issues. Mm -hmm. And so I can help you with your walk with the Lord, but I can't help with bipolar and ADHD exactly. and exactly. incest and rape and abuse and, mm -hmm. and just anxiety disorders mm -hmm. and depression mm -hmm. and transformation. All the things that need to happen, they are screaming for us. And mm -hmm. so we yeah. have to do a better job of finding that. And, as, and as, especially as African Americans, the people raised in the South, the church has always been the number one place where we come mm -hmm. for those issues. Mm -hmm. The church is like a hospital now, yes, like yes. a life coaching mm -hmm. ground. So I want to do my job and what God has called me to do Amen. to to put in systems, especially mm -hmm. for pastors out there who feel like they have to do it all by themselves. I want to help mm -hmm. them to put in a system, a team of life coaches or Christian counselors to help take some of the weight off their shoulders. Mm -hmm. now, can, can I, before, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off, but when you said that. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll make up for it later. <laughs> Listen, but when you said for pastors, because there have been many pastors that have taken their own lives. So 
would you incorporate them and have, have something where for pastors, because they don't always want to tell what's going on because they're supposed to not have anything going on. Well, where does the counselor go for counseling? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if you're supposed to be the helper, where can you go to admit mm -hmm. that you need help? Mm -hmm. You know, and so I actually did a, a workshop for uh, ministers and their spouses, you know, wow. out of St. Simon. And and that's what we talked about, keeping their relationships together. Wow. Because when, when you have, especially in today and age, when you have a man and a woman that might be co-pastors, right. you know, if they split, the church dies. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of pressure. Mm -hmm. But you know, for being happily married, mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. Just just because you minister at church doesn't mean you don't need to work on your on your exactly. relationship. Exactly. And they have the same stress as people in the NBA and celebrities because they're constantly travel, mm -hmm. traveling. They're constantly out and about. Mm -hmm. They're constantly being approached. You know in the church, just because mm -hmm. you're the pastor doesn't mean that women will not approach you. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of temptation for them to deal with, a lot mm -hmm. of stress. And so I just offer you know, myself and my colleagues and being able to help them, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And of course, yeah. I get a free session too. Right. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know about you. Let's talk about <laughs> What's going on in my life? Right. So. <laughs> you, you, you know, you you say something that's really, it, it just seems like how come it's taken so long for this to take place in the ministry? Mm -hmm. And why was it, in your eyes or, or your opinion, why do you think it was taboo so long ago, like, we can't talk about that in the church. We don't deal with that in the church. What do you, what do you have to say to that? Well, I think there's a stigma. There, there's that psychology means that, some, that you're crazy. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And then as psychologists, we weren't taught until very recently to really merge ministry. How can you really heal without being in contact with the healer. Mm. And so I don't think as psychologists, we've been as verbal about that as we should, mm -hmm. because you know, we, we might be taught, okay, don't push your faith on others, but there's not a single psychologist out there that can't tell you what, sometimes I can't tell you how I know what I know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to go in prayer. Now there are mm -hmm. different perspectives out there, but you'll see that market starting to grow. It is already huge. Mm -hmm. And there are churches that already have, you know, Christian mm -hmm. counseling, life mm -hmm. coaches already mm -hmm. merged within their ministry because people are asking asking for. They want to come to the church. Now sometimes not necessarily in the church because they right. don't want this, but satellites offices right. that are affiliated mm -hmm. with churches. So wow. I think that's, that's part of my job is to be part of one of those faces that say, hey, you know, psychology, counseling, social work, and ministry, they go together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Guy yeah. is a counselor, so yes. he's going to bring yes. in other counselors to do his will. He's yeah. the wonderful counselor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my God, yes he is. It's, it's just so... It's really needed now. Uh, people are afraid and they're, with, with what you were saying with marriages, not just pastors and their spouses, but sitting in the church, smiling in the church, but not talking in the car on the way home, not talking in the house, sleeping in separate rooms, in the church. And so I think <laughs> we we really need to delve deeper into that. I know you're right. People have to talk. How do you make relationships work? Now that we're in it, now the honeymoon is worn off, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. What do we do? Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of couples that don't uh, date. They get caught up right. with family. They get caught up in work. They yeah. get caught up in money struggles. And they forget to do what they did in the very beginning mm -hmm. to make the marriage work. So that means that you have to date. It has to be scheduled. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thursday night is date night mm -hmm. in my house. Okay. Because if you don't have it scheduled, you'll look at each other and say, well, you know what? On Thursday, I have this meeting. On Thursday, the kids <laughs> have this. It has to be, it has oh to be scheduled God. because You're you right. need time to actually connect so that you like each other. Mm. If right. you don't mm -hmm. spend time with each other, you'll find yourself not liking your partner and starting mm -hmm. to argue over, over little things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we spend time on grows. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. As psychologists, we know a lot about how to make marriage work. We know about the science. We know about this is what happily married couples do, mm -hmm. all right? This is what unhappily married couples do. And mm -hmm. I think now it's time for us to take that teaching to the church to be the meat, if you will. Mm -hmm. well, I can't even say meat because my, my wife is pescatarian. I mean, she only eats seafood, so I haven't <laughs> had meat in a while. So that's, a, <laughs> that's making me a little sad. But um,